if you ask one thing that i could mm-hmm. have done back mm-hmm. in india mm-hmm. so i should have chosen to do german course till b1 mm-hmm. which would be more useful Hey everyone welcome back to my another video if you are watching me for the first time my name is rushikesh and i make videos on university education working and life in germany so today's video i want to welcome you in one of my insight series video if you, you may ask what is insight series so basically i travel to different universities in germany courses that you are actually interested to study in and then you bring you the, and then bring information all together in one place right from the people who are actually studying in the in the course so sometimes you might not even find the information on internet and i am going to give you truly insights insights uh, of the of the course of the university of the city that you are going to study in if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet hit the su- hit the subscribe button it it gives me your support and it also informs you whenever i upload a new content because of that i travel to ingolstadt i am right here in the campus of hochschule ingolstadt today and i came here to give you insights on international automotive engineering course here at hochschule ingolstadt so what information that you are going to get here today what's the admission procedure what are the specialization that you can do with this course what kind of jobs do you get after after the masters how much does it cost to live here in ingo start and all this kind of all these kind of questions all right so make sure that you watch this video till the end to get all the answers all right let's get started so i have krishna with me today who is studying international automotive engineering at hochschule ingo start and let's just ask some questions so krishna would you like to introduce yourself uh, what do you, what are you studying here yeah. uh, oh, are you actually i actually told what are you studying here but when did you come here and what do you do now yeah hello everyone my name is krishna and uh, i'm from andhra india and uh, currently i'm doing my second semester in uh, international automotive engineering i came in last summer march 2022 yeah. and uh, Yeah alongside my studies I also started working part time in continental as software developer for can drivers mm-hmm. for last 7 months now okay yeah all right so good good so when he says he is doing work student uh, actually I also have made a work student video uh, before uh, right you, you can see it right here and it actually tells you why you should do it and what are the benefits that you get so make sure that you check out this video all right so now i want to ask you one question related to admission you know uh, mm-hmm. when you apply to this university yeah. so i checked it was like if you have to apply through universist yeah. and then there is this uh, aptitude test so yeah. can you can you elaborate a little bit on that okay so the criteria basically is first you apply through universist uh, with your uh, graduation grades and uh, also you can upload your uh, german a1 certification also along mm-hmm. with universist mm-hmm. but when it says aptitude test initially i thought it is some manual test that you need to take mm-hmm. but when i checked with my seniors it's not an actual test it is just you need to upload few documents yeah which proves uh, your eligibility criteria uh-huh. so generally if you do bachelors in india we they only offer like 170 credit uh, courses 180 credits 170 180 okay. sometimes uh-huh. yeah mm-hmm. but uh, here they expect 2 10 credits for a master's admission so okay. the extra yeah. credits 30 which you need to show through your work experience or internships so you need to uh, prove it by providing a document called 30 ects document mm-hmm. uh, so this is all about aptitude test there is no specific test as such okay. but you need to prove your eligibility by providing the document about these extra credits so now can you tell us about like how is the course structured and all yeah okay so it is basically a three semester course mm-hmm. where uh, you can do specialization in two things mm-hmm. one is vehicle safety the yeah. other one is vehicle electronics so generally if you are from mechanical background people choose vehicle safety mm-hmm. because it has more subjects related to vehicle i uh, mean mechanical mm-hmm. something like vehicle mm-hmm. dynamics mm-hmm. or power train mm-hmm. or more into mechanical side mm-hmm. but if you are from electronics background in bachelors mm-hmm. and if you choose to go towards the software side mm-hmm. further you can go ahead with the vehicle electronics okay. where it has more about mm-hmm. communication protocols okay. or you know software development mm-hmm. one or two subjects on software development yeah okay so actually i i was going to come to the specialization part but uh-huh. i think i actually you answered kind of uh, yeah. in a way so i i just want to ask you now what kind of specialization you have chosen okay like what are you doing your specialization in Yo, yeah. yeah so my bachelor's i have done in electronics and communication mm-hmm. and uh, after that i worked 
years on software development so okay. i i want to continue working on it uh-huh. uh, so i have chosen uh, vehicle electronics as a specialization okay. but there is a catch here Mm-hmm. So even if you take vehicle electronics there are some mandatory mechanical subjects that you need to take every mm-hmm. semester so even i study power train mm-hmm. and uh, vehicle dynamics okay but yeah so even the people who choose vehicle safety mm-hmm. they have to choose some electronic subjects as mm-hmm. their electives mm-hmm. so that you will get an idea on both the subsystems uh-huh. but still you specialize on one of this okay. by taking more subjects on Mm-hmm. uh your specialization okay so when you say vehicle dynamics and vehicle safety as a specialization can you briefly tell us about what kind of subjects do you study in that okay yeah. if you take about vehicle electronics mm-hmm. so i have mandatory subject called vehicle dynamics which mm-hmm. is specific to mechanical but yeah. still i have to do it okay because it is part of automotive engineering and uh-huh. it's important for okay. that okay uh but if you take specialization level subjects mm-hmm. uh for vehicle electronics we have automotive communication systems yeah and development methodologies for softwares mm-hmm. and uh, we have something called automotive control engineering okay power supply and energy distribution where they mm-hmm. talk about mm-hmm. hybrid vehicles okay. power supplies in hybrid vehicles okay. but you can find more about it in the website if you just go to website there yeah. is the whole course structure yeah. on what all subjects you can take as a specialization and what all electives you can take in the specialization it's yeah. very clear in the website exactly so we kind of can cannot cover everything in a, in a single video so i would also suggest you the same that you go to the website i will include the link in the video description you just click on it and you will get to the module handbook where you can check everything on your own also so with this kind of specialization and after completing the master studies what kind of jobs do students get from this course like from this university okay yeah, yeah. so generally if you take a vehicle safety as your uh, specialization mm-hmm. so people would go into design uh, design of automotive subsystems mm-hmm. and also into the production line sometimes okay mm-hmm. uh, there is a specific course for that as well uh-huh. uh, but you can also go based on your earlier experience if you are from mechanical background if you already worked on the design uh, but it is not uh, that if you take a vehicle safety you will always go into design so i know people who have done mm-hmm. uh, vehicle safety but still went into software side okay uh-huh. because they have done some projects uh-huh. during the course uh-huh. uh, on the software on uh, machine learning okay um, you know data science uh-huh. so uh-huh. you can always include these specializations as an electives in your mm-hmm. course mm-hmm. while you do vehicle okay. safety okay. and do the projects on it uh-huh. and still go into different subsist a different field okay. but if you take a vehicle uh, electronics mm-hmm. you majorly go into uh, development of communication protocols okay. like can and ethernet uh-huh. mm-hmm. and uh, mostly into software testing okay. uh, vehicle testing okay crash testing mm-hmm. uh, if you take vehicle safety mm-hmm. enough of the course but i want to ask you now how is teaching how is yeah. support from the pro- professors here uh-huh. what what do you say on that yeah so first semester it was in march uh-huh. so i think it was just after corona and okay. uh, people started getting uh, used to going to college okay but it was mostly hybrid uh-huh. 50% of courses were offered uh, online and other uh-huh. 50% was offline okay. but this semester it's completely offline uh-huh. but uh, from the professor side uh, they would generally record all the lectures okay. and upload it in a moodle platform uh, yeah, yeah. where you can revisit and mm-hmm. uh, watch the videos again mm-hmm. uh, and also if you have any doubts you can just post it in the forum okay. they would answer or uh-huh. you can just mail them any time yeah. and yeah. book an appointment with them any time okay. if you want to right. get the Uh-huh. doubts clarified so uh-huh. support wise it's always good so it's getting li- little bit cold not little bit it's very cold so i th- we thought instead of just shoot- shooting outside we'll go to his place yeah. i can even show you his place and then uh, we can shoot the li- rest of the video there okay so this is his room How much do you pay for this? Uh, 430 euros. Okay, 430 euros it is and see this is the room. This looks good. How much are the living expenses here in Ingolstadt on an average how much a student has to pay? Mhm. Yeah. So for me at least uh, right from when I start uh, the most expenses would be on only rent and insurance. Mhm. So the rent would be on an average 
uh, it would go from 430 to 450 because in Ingolstadt university doesn't provide any accommodations for students okay so you have to get it privately on an average i can say between 430 450 for rent yeah and uh, 120 euros per, for insurance mm-hmm. yeah and uh, for groceries and miscellaneous i think i would say around 250 maximum okay so, so around total around 800 would go 800 uh, to 900 on an average i yeah, would say on an average. consider the range as 800 to 900 per yeah. month living so, expenses as a student here yeah. in ingolstadt your whole blocked amount will go in the expenses <laughs> for sure yeah i mean it so, has increased now yeah. blocked account when i came it was around 860 euros mm-hmm. and i would say health insurance also when i started when i started here in germany it was 110 now it is yeah, 120 120 right yeah. so in- inflation Yeah. and um the thing now i have to ask you is what about the part time jobs mm-hmm. how how is the availability here in ingolstadt because i heard there are a lot of technical companies big companies here in, yeah. in the city so is it tough to get uh, what kind of part time jobs technical non technical how mm-hmm. is it okay at least for me uh, i had a earlier experience in mm-hmm. india mm-hmm. in software okay. development okay for around 3 3 years 8 months mm-hmm. okay. so as soon as i came here i started applying for all the software development jobs okay. in lot of companies mm-hmm. and within 2 months i could find a part time job okay. in continental uh-huh. and i also got offer from bosch okay. but that is somewhere far and they mm-hmm. expect me to move there okay. but continental is offering me work from home mm-hmm. okay. so i chose to do it okay uh, but if not even if you don't have an experience mm-hmm. uh, there are lot of student jobs uh, yeah. which you can do like in uh, restaurants or yeah. Yeah. some uh, shopping complexes okay. which lot of people do mm-hmm. okay. but uh, uh, my second option was that if okay. i had not found any job uh-huh. Uh-huh. i would uh, do that okay and uh, as far as i know lot of my friends also do it okay. and it's not so difficult to get them okay so okay. there is always openings in most mm-hmm. of these places mm-hmm. would students be able to save some money out of it after like you know spending everything mm-hmm. on accommodation groceries everything yeah can they, can they able to save some money afterwards like so after part time jobs as per my knowledge mm-hmm. um it depends on how much you're paying for accommodation yeah that's true because understand. the other expenses would still mm-hmm. s- uh, be the same yeah. on groceries yeah. and miscellaneous mm-hmm. y- the only thing that you can save is on accommodation if yeah. you find an accommodation between um 300 350 mm-hmm. you can save that extra 100 euros mm-hmm. but otherwise i think it would go like around 800 850 okay but through student job some like i know some people who make around 1200 also okay so mm-hmm. if you managed to find such student jobs yeah now this was all about the expenses and you know how much uh, you can earn with part time jobs but also i uh, coming back to the university point of view the course how much do you pay for the course fees or how much is the fees uh, semester contribution here in this university okay so this is the best part about uh, the high uh, technis optional in gulstad that the mm-hmm. fees is only 52 euros per semester okay that's really cheap and that is all you need to pay uh, if you need a a uh, semester ticket mm-hmm. for the local transport yeah. you have to buy it separately mm-hmm. for students it would be 23 euros per month okay and you can buy it for 6 mm-hmm. uh, months okay. so they only give semester ticket yeah. which is for 6 months yeah and uh, yeah it's like 120 euros extra for yeah. whole semester mm-hmm. you can get to okay. use the local public transport i think we forgot to like talk about one thing like mm-hmm. we discussed before that you are you you are also going for an extension semester mm-hmm. that that po- point i think we forgot to cover in the um, you know course structure yeah. that we were talking about mm-hmm. so he has a chance also to go to a, a, to another country for an extension semester yeah. can you can you elaborate on that yes yeah. so as a student uh, here you get an opportunity to do an extension semester uh, one semester mm-hmm. outside mm-hmm. Uh, anywhere across the world so mm-hmm. um the countries that offers is spain italy okay. australia usa canada okay. uh-huh. even india okay and uh, the application process is very simple okay. you just have to be enrolled as a student in uh, this university mm-hmm. and uh, you have an application period yeah. where uh, for the next winter mm-hmm. the application mm-hmm. period is mm-hmm. this okay. now, like october to november 15th okay. one and a half month mm-hmm. you just have to select what all universities uh, you would like to study yeah and uh, based on your preferences based on the number of applications mm-hmm. so if you get to uh, choose one of them mm-hmm. so you will get an opportunity to do exchange semester yeah. and you will also be paid stipend mm-hmm. uh, every month okay 
so generally it would vary from 500 to 900 euros mm-hmm. based on the location you go okay. if you go to australia they'll mm-hmm. pay 700 okay. if you go to spain it is 600 mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. based on the expenses yeah. and other things there i think i have covered almost everything that i wanted to cover in this in the, in the insights video and the last question for you i would say is what would you like to tell my viewers like who are mm-hmm. going to come to this university who are will be planning to come to this university what should they come prepared okay yeah so as per uh, my knowledge and feedback from other friends as well mm-hmm. it would always be good if we have at least one and after two years of work experience okay uh, because people who come right after graduation they find it little bit difficult to find the jobs mm-hmm. and also take some time to understand how exactly industry works learn at least one of the programming languages I, it can either be c or python yeah in terms of german mm-hmm. b1 is like the best even mm-hmm. if you are at swai level a2 level it is still okay mm-hmm. but if you get a chance if you have lot of time in india mm-hmm. at least do till b1 these were the insights in the international automotive course here at hokshula ingol start and i tried to cover as much as points as much points possible thank you krishna for for all the information that uh, that you provided i'm sure it it is valuable uh, even if you are coming to coming to join this course or even if you are like applying and if you if you are thinking about applying to this course so i'm i'm sure that this information will come in handy if you still have more questions you can you can let me know in the comments if you want me to cover some some other ideas or other topics do let me also know in the comments and i'll try to cover, i'll try to make a video on that uh, but before we go krishna would you like to tell these guys what they have to do now uh, make sure you subscribe to rishikesh channel uh, because uh, he covers everything uh, i wish i could have seen this kind of videos when i was back in india now he is covering all this so don't forget to subscribe and uh, hit the like button sure thank you so thank you so much krishna and that that's all in this video i'll, I'll see you in the next one bye bye